Welcome to Ask the Pastors, where you ask the questions and your pastors try and answer them. Ray, we've got a question from one of our members. They're asking, what is critical race theory and is it biblical? We're hearing a lot about this in the news and uh, I've been uh, trying to explore some of it myself because it is new. At least uh, it keeps evolving and changing. If you've not heard the phrase critical race theory, you certainly have interacted with a lot of the ideas that are, are put forward by this theory, many of which are just uh, assumed now by our culture to be true. And it gets back to the beginning, really, where God created Adam and Eve. There is one people in God's image, and all human beings came from them. And then because of man's sin, as man was coming together to not obey God, if you remember after the flood of Noah, when God first wiped the whole world out, <laughs> Um, they, God commanded them again to be fruitful, multiply, to fill the earth, to spread out. And what did the, the very next uh, chapter says, but instead of spreading out, they all came together in one place, lest we be spread out. They even express it as, a, as an act of disobedience to God. And so the Tower of Babel happens, and they build this great tower. Um, many think that it was to avoid another flood. If the flood comes, we'll be above the flood. Some think it was to get to heaven. But whatever it was, it was in defiance of what God had said. So God scattered them there uh, so that man would not unite against him. And he confused their languages. That's how he scattered them. And we know, genetically, that was the beginning of our notion of race. So it was God's idea that men be scattered in different places, and that scattering took only so much of the gene pool with them. And so as they went uh, to one region, some people got lighter colored uh, skin and lighter hair and different you know, shades, blue eyes and so forth. And some got darker skin and darker eyes uh, and, and uh, uh, very curly hair, tight hair. Those are the racial distinctions. It's always with the face and the hair, especially the eyes and the mouth, the different features. We can think of, you know, uh, Asians, uh, Eastern Asians or, or from Japan or China and the different shape of the eye and, and the, the round-eyed Americans and, and Europeans. So all of that is real and that's there. And we can measure the different heights. Some races are taller than others and so forth. Um, but one thing we know is that all people are in the image of God. All people are equal. Um, and so the idea that one race is superior to another uh, in the eyes of God, in dignity, in, in, in um, humanness, is simply false. It's just not true. Um, there's really only, in the biblical spiritual sense, two races, the sons of God and the sons of Satan, the wicked one. Uh, and that is all those who believe in Jesus are the children of God and all those who don't are the children of Satan. We, so we all start out in that category, and if we're converted, we are transferred by adoption, right, into the house of God. Now, what, what critical race theory does is it sees everything through this lens of race, um, and it actually makes good guys and bad guys um, based on race. And so because of the history of Western civilization, they'll say, and, and this is the current version of it, that the Western peoples, particularly the white race, they actually call whiteness a race, which is just a falsehood, it's not true, but the white race is the oppressor, and particularly the, the, the black from Africa race, because there are blacks from other, you know, dark-skinned people from India and, and other regions. But they'll say the, the American, you know, African-Americans, those dark-skinned colored people from Africa who are now in America, they are the oppressed, okay? And that all white people are oppressors, and all black people are oppressed. So it doesn't matter. This is the really insidious thing. It doesn't matter what you personally do. It doesn't matter what I, if I never said a, a, a disparaging thing to a, a person from a minority who's not my, same, my own race, I'm still a racist because I'm white. Recent um, uh, article or books come out, yes, you are uh, all racist white people or something to that effect. And, and that's what people don't understand. Why are they tearing down statues of, of Frederick Douglass and Harriet Tubman? These were great. Or even Abraham Lincoln. These were great people who did great things for the black race. Well, no, they're, they're part of the system. This is the other idea that racism isn't personal. It's systemic. We're all part of the system. Western mm -hmm. culture, America in its founding is racist. So all of our institutions are racist. All of our, uh, our, our um, organizations, which would include the government, which would include the schools, which would include the church ultimately, for critical race theory to be carried out uh, consistently, all churches have to be shut down and closed and, and be done away with because Christianity arose as we know it, uh, from the Protestant Reformation, um, you know, Protestant Christianity and even Western Catholicism, all of that arose in the Western nations. And those Western white, mostly white nations, therefore, are, are part of the oppression. The 
the oppressingness of Christianity mm. because it comes from that. So, so everything uh, that comes from our society is racist, and it all has to be torn down. And you can see the fallacy of that because mm. what that means is, again, it doesn't matter what I say or do or think or anything. I'm already a racist because of who I am, not because of what I do. The very opposite of what Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said when he said in his I Have a Dream speech, I have a dream that someday black men and white men will not be treated according to the color of their skin, but according to the content of their character. Praise yeah. God for that wonderful yeah. statement. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. got what the Bible gets. We should treat people according to the content of their personal character, not according to some giant system and this giant theory that just categorizes and stereotypes people into these groups from which they cannot escape. And it's false and it's not true. God looks at what we do personally and not what group we're a part of. And we will be responsible to enforce that. That's why critical race theory is unbiblical and, and really wrong for our society. Yeah, Ray, I agree. And I think one thing that is super critical in this conversation is that whatever race or ethnicity or class or gender or whatever group you belong to, you, dear person, were created by God in His image. But you, yourself, have rebelled against your Creator. And one day, you, by yourself, no group, you will stand by yourself before that God. And you will have to answer for your sins. And the only safety, the only way to be saved is by faith in His Son, Jesus Christ. Well, that's it for Ask the Pastors. Be sure and join us next time.